In this video tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to create a basic pop-up modal in Webflow. So an example of this would be when a user clicks on to a specific button, a pop-up modal then appears. And in this example, it just so happens to be subscribed to our newsletter, followed by a contact form to get the customer's information. But again, you can design the pop-up modal to have whatever content that you'd like. So another example would be this website, egs.gg slash speakers. And on this page, it displays a bunch of speakers. And if you'd like to learn more about a specific speaker, you'll click onto this button, learn more, in which case it opens up a pop-up explaining more information about that specific speaker. Then when you click onto the cross icon, it then closes that pop-up. So let's build this into Webflow. All right, guys, I'm now in Webflow. And what I have here on my page is just a simple text followed by a button and just the background image of the one and only Big Chungus. So what, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna decide what I want this pop-up modal to be and what I want the interactions and the triggers to be. So I want it to be when the user clicks onto this button, show battle stats, it's gonna open up a pop-up modal that displays more information about the Big Chungus. So let's go ahead and do that. So with the body selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag in a div block. And in this div block, I'm just gonna drag it just so it's below body, so we can see it. And I'm gonna give it a class of pop-up. And I'm actually gonna change this position from static to fixed. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is set to full. And I'm gonna give it a bit of Z index, let's just say 10. And what I did here was by changing the position from static to fixed, uh, fixed simply means it's gonna take up full screen simply because we selected full and it's gonna be fixed towards the screen. So as I scroll down the page, the pop-up will still be fixed to the screen. Uh, and by putting a Z index of 10, it just ensures that this pop-up is gonna be in front of every single content. So the higher the Z index number is, the more it's gonna be in front. Now, on top of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure the width is set to 100% and there's a min height of 100 viewport height. Uh, again, this is just taking up the full screen. And from here, we can style our pop-up background. So I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe change this to like a dark green, like this. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag another div block inside that pop-up element. And I'm gonna give this a class of pop-up-item, so pop-up item. And with the pop-up selected, I'm gonna go ahead and put flex and I'm gonna align it to the center and justify it to the center. So you can see that pop-up item that we just created is now in the center. So with this pop-up item selected, I'm gonna give it a background color of white, maybe give it a radius of 24 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put some padding, maybe like 40 pixels on each side. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag in a header, change it to header two. And I'm just gonna type in big chungus uh, info. And I'm also gonna go ahead and just add an image. And I'm gonna choose an image of the big chungus. I'm gonna give this a class of chungus image photo. And I'm gonna give it a width of 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the radius to 50 viewport width, which simply rounds, rounds it all out. So it's a circle. Just gonna drag this image just above the text. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a text block. So with the text block selected, I'm now gonna put some information about the Big Chungus. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead to chat GPT and I'm just gonna copy a bunch of content and paste it in. So now you can see that everything is working. Um, it doesn't look that great because with the pop-up item, the width is currently set to auto, which means it's gonna take up automatically uh, whatever the computer thinks it should be. Because we have so much content, that's why it's stretched out. So to fix this, we're gonna go ahead and just change the width to something like 420 pixels. And you can see it's looking much, much better. But for my liking, this pop-up is way too tall. So what I'm actually gonna do is with the text block, I'm gonna give it a class of um, bio. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the height to something like 180 pixels. So now you can see that I've changed the height to 180 pixels as indicated by this blue box, but you'll notice that the text is overflowing from that box. So it's actually gone beyond the box. So what we can do here is we can change overflow from visible 
to auto. And what this does is it makes sure that the text doesn't go over the 180 height, but it added a scroll bar. So when the user scrolls down, they can actually see the text, which is what I want in this situation. I'm gonna go, also go ahead and just add some padding onto the right hand side. So maybe 20 pixels. Uh, that way it gives some spacing between the text and the scroll. And this is looking great. So now I'm just gonna finish it off with a button. And in this button, I'll give it a class of close button. Now change the text to pop close pop up. And I'm also just give it a bit more padding top and bottom. And maybe I'll change the radius to 50 viewport width. And I'll also give it a top margin of 42 pixels. And maybe I'll just change the font size to 20 pixels. So again, you guys can style this however you want. Obviously, you can actually just add whatever content you like. You can drag in a contact form if you want to, to, to essentially collect customer information. And in addition to this close pop-up button, you can do something else. So for example, you can actually just drag in an image and adding a cross, for example, and giving it a class of cross icon, changing the width to 42 pixels and the height to 42 pixels. And maybe you wanna position it to the top right. So you can actually change the position to absolute and then go to the pop-up item and change the position to relative. So now that this cross is essentially relative to that pop-up item, we can go ahead and position this to the top right and go ahead and just add some pixels to the top and to the right. So it's completely up to you what content you like inside. Uh, again, you can do a cross instead of a button. Um, you can put different images, different texts. You can add a contact form, whatever you like. But I'm gonna keep it super simple. I'm just gonna delete this cross icon and I'm just gonna animate it now. So right now with this pop-up selected, I'm gonna hit the display from flex to hidden or display none. And now you can see that it's still inside the code, but it's, we just can't see it on the front end because the display is set to none essentially. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make it that when the user clicks onto this button, it opens up that pop-up by display, displaying it from display none to display flex. And then once we click that close pop-up button, it's gonna change it from display flex to display none. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go into interactions, click mouse interactions, start animation, click plus, and we're gonna call it open pop-up. And now we're gonna do hit a Z. So now we made it so that when the user clicks onto this, it's gonna, it's gonna have a certain action. And what we want is we wanna select pop-up, click plus, click hide show, and we're gonna change it to flex. So now that's done, I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna preview this. And you'll notice that when I click on this button, it changed it from display none to display flex. But now we're gonna just make sure we code the close pop-up in. So this is pretty simple. We're gonna hit a Z. And in the pop-up, I'm just gonna temporarily change it from display none to display flex. So we can see what's going on. With the close pop-up button selected, hit interactions, same thing, tap, click start animation, click plus, call it close pop-up. And then now hitting a Z, we can go back to the pop-up, click plus, click hide show and click hide. So now that is done, I'm gonna make sure I select this pop-up and just change it back to display none. Oh, and then go back to the preview and you can see that everything is working. So you can see it's now showing the battle stats when we click the button and now when we click close pop-up, it then closes that pop-up. So hopefully you guys understand the main premise of this basic pop-up modal and I hope you guys play around with this and eventually you'll be able to create whatever you like. So for example, if I click onto this button, you might wanna make it that when the user clicks onto this green background, it will close that pop-up. So hopefully you guys can figure out how to do that based on this tutorial. And another thing, a challenge for you guys is instead of clicking this button, show battle stats, and then it'll show the pop-up, you can also program it for it to be something like duration. So when the user lands on your website, maybe after seven seconds, then it opens up this pop-up form. So see if you guys can do that or figure out how to do that. But I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.